What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is Griff and welcome to the Hashtag Squad. Today, I'm going to be walking you guys through dual sticks and why they are so prevalent right now, why they've been gaining so much popularity. And there are some really good reasons. But first off, I just want to kind of say real quick that if you're curious about which ones I'm using in this video, it's going to be a Thrustmaster Warthog and a Thrustmaster T16000. I'll go into those a little bit later in the video. But first, I want to get through the reasons why dual stick has been really popping up. So just a little background for myself. When I got this game, I immediately said that I needed to get a HOTAS because I wanted to have that immersion feeling. And I started getting pretty good with the HOTAS and people kept talking to me about dual sticks. And I was like, so what's the big deal? And then somebody actually explained it to me why dual sticks are so cool. And here's the reason why. They allow for full six directions of freedom within both joysticks. So that's three per joystick. And on top of that, it's not just a digital control. So when you're using something like a keyboard or just a regular button on a HOTAS to bind strafing, for example, you have a digital input. That means that when you strafe, it is automatically 100% strafe or it's zero. It's either on or off. However, when you use something like a dual stick setup, it allows you to set it up to the axis. So that lets you have analog control, which boils down to, I can set exactly how much thrust I need for the current fight, which means I can fine tune my movements perfectly, which is a huge benefit. And you don't just see it in like combat. It's not just effective in combat. It's effective for racing. It's effective for accuracy on what you're doing as far as flying is concerned. It's a really, really good setup to use. And the last option, or rather the last reason why people are actually really, really into the whole dual joystick thing is that if you want to go dual joystick, it doesn't cost you that much. It's going to cost you less than a full-blown HOTAS will. So in my opinion, the cheapest HOTAS that you can get that's even worth its weight and I say this loosely because it's a SciTech product, is the X52. And that'll run you at least $120 to $150, depending on which one you're getting. Now, if you get two Thrustmaster T16,000s, you're looking at 80 to 100 bucks. And I recommend the Thrustmaster T16,000s for two reasons. Number one, they've got excellent build quality and the Hall Effect sensor that it uses is the same one that the Warthog uses, which means you're going to get insane accuracy. The second reason is that these sticks, the T16000s, are actually ambidextrous. So you can set one up for your left hand and it'll feel comfortable in your left hand, and you can set the other one up for your right hand and it'll be just for your right hand. So that's an amazing feature and there's not many joysticks out there on the market that are truly ambidextrous or left-handed. So let's kind of get into my thoughts on it. I have spent about a week with these and I've been very, very happy with what I've done. But let me preface this with the fact that if you do decide to go dual sticks or if you decide to switch to a joystick for the first time, your first few days or a few hours are really, really going to be frustrating for you. You're not going to feel like you're doing that good. You're basically going to feel like a retarded giraffe. So just a kind of a disclaimer there, but that's not to say that you can't do well with them. And I think that this, this video, while I may not necessarily be flying against the best people, and I may not be flying at my best, I think this is a good example of just how well you can actually do with a joystick or dual joysticks. So from what I found, the pros that I can like actually clarify from the uh, using a dual stick over a HOTAS is that it's very intuitive to pick up. So when you're using this, it's going to make a lot of sense to you because your left hand controls all your translation. So that's forward, backward, strafing left, strafing right, all that kind of stuff. And literally you're just moving your hand in the way that you want it to move. So it makes a whole lot of sense as you get used to it and as you pick it up, it doesn't take you long to really kind of lock in what you need to do when you're using it. It's just going to take you time to get used to using it, essentially, and getting precise with it. Um, the second thing is, this setup actually allows you to do a lot of maneuvers a little bit easier than you would have had when you were using something that was mostly digital. So if you're using mouse and keyboard or something like that, 
you don't get the same accuracy in your maneuvers. So like I can just set strafe um, to exactly how fast I want it to be. I don't necessarily have to worry about feathering it or whatever. It's just lightly move forward on it and or lightly move back. And it also allows me to come to a stop a little bit faster than I normally would be able to. And I noticed that my strafing around targets is a lot more tight. And I can stay on target a lot longer than I used to when I was using just a HOTAS. Um, the third pro that I actually really, really noticed is I have more buttons than I know what to do with. So I know there's a real concern when people pick up a HOTAS or want to switch the joystick that they won't have enough buttons to mine everything that they want. But I'm telling you right now, at least when I'm using the Warthog and the T16000, I have so many buttons that I can use, it's unreal. I actually have buttons that I don't know what to bind things to. So that's a huge plus for that. So my last point here is if you're looking for a setup for combat racing or anything else that requires precision, or you just want an immersive setup, I really, really recommend this because to be honest, you're not gonna get much better for the price point. There's nothing out there under $100 that's going to give you the same sort of feeling and control that these do. So that kind of wraps it up for the pro section. On the cons, there's really not that many that I could think of objectively. And I tried to keep this video as objective as possible, but in the end, it's really going to be what you feel most comfortable with. So if you feel really comfortable with a mouse and keyboard and you really enjoy it, I'm not saying you should go out and get dual, like a dual joystick. Now, if you have a buddy that has a setup like it, you should probably try it and see if you like it. But at the end of the day, you need to use what's most comfortable for you. So that's kind of my thoughts on dual sticks and I'll leave you with that, but I'm going to leave the video running so that way you guys can kind of see what I'm doing with the joysticks and how I'm flying and you can kind of see it real time and just get a, a feel for it. So thanks for tuning in. Um, if you got any questions, please just leave them down below or contact me on the RSI forums if you're looking at this on there and I'll be glad to get back with you and offer you any insight that I have. But keep in mind, I am by far not an expert with this. There are much better people out there that fly dual stick. I just thought I would give my opinion on it because a lot of people are kind of wondering what it's all about. And I want to help people kind of get a feel for it. In the end, though, I really appreciate you guys watching this. And I'll see you guys around the verse.